In commissioning this garden, I really felt I was commissioning an artwork. I wanted an artist to create a garden that was an artwork, as opposed to putting their own works into a garden. The South London Gallery has always had this outdoor space, but it was very drab and grey with paving slabs. The gallery occasionally used it for events, but it's always had huge potential to be transformed into something rather special. Gabriella Roscoe's really achieved that with this garden, which isn't quite like any other garden in the world. I was intrigued to see if I can try some of my ideas in, the, in a space like this, which is surrounded by a community in the south of London. I tried to first to understand the geometry of the space in connection with the building and the surroundings and the circulation paths of everyday life. In my work in general, when I think in functionality, I think often in the circle, in the sphere, in the movement, in the mechanism that makes things flow and apply this to the grid and make a grid of the garden and make some kind of basic points of activation of the space. So we, this is the gardener's the little path. The beginning of Gabriel's geometry onto the garden. He used the door swing of the swing door that's on the Claw Education Studio. He used that as his kind of generating circle and that was the scale set across the garden which was a super interesting moment of, of changing scale of everything and something that could be read actually from the tower blocks behind. Working with Gabriel he's thinking very architecturally both about the material so there's a very interesting conversation about stone and about the internal logic of how we're using that as brick and this very sort of Japanese, almost Zen flow of the stone through the garden. I like the use of materials that Gabriel's brought to the garden. Being very familiar to South London, it's brick and it's York stone, and that's all over South London, but they're just used in a very different way. We went for a big walk uh, around Kew Gardens and Gabriel chose all the plants not by country and area as they were laid out but by sculpture and shape and form and colour. Tried something it's like, mm. like that one from distance is beautiful, the one. This will be nice, so you have the brick bench or something and then you have this. So then in that sense you can do then the planting, it can come all the way here. Then a uh, pond, not much like a pond, it's more like a X pond. It's a ruin and, or something, and then our plants are growing in something that it I was. I love that idea of it being an abandoned pond. Uh, right, so that could work. To have Kew Garden helping us is a very nice thing. In terms of gardens, size does not matter. <laughs> you can really make a nice, uh, special place in your backyard. You walk through and you are experiencing different rooms and moments. Intimate space, an open space, a public space, a personal space, or a little corner and then more like the big patio where the public things are happening. The idea of different levels, topographically speaking, you have the idea of a pond, the idea of a hill. So all the different moments in which you are experiencing a landscape. The design also references board games and really influences the way people use the space, the way they sit on the different ledges and levels and the way they gather following the circles of the design. And board games are something which have recurred in Gabrielle's work in the past. An important part of the brief was for the garden to incorporate a new entranceway for residents on So Gardens housing estate because the garden is a sort of linking area be between the estate and the South London Gallery. So that entrance has been really integrated into Gabrielle's design, added to which we've opened up a new welcoming reception area for residents. Another important idea behind the garden was that it should eventually become like an overgrown urban ruin. The idea of the planting that fights back the urban grid. So how nature and geometry are in constant collapse in a kind of mutual takeover. 
it's always been imagined as how the planting, the organic kind of parts of the architecture, which is equal to the stone, grows and develops and kind of becomes equal and possibly takes over in lots of areas. And I think over 10 years, you're going to get something really wild and unruly and fantastic.